Hello everybody! Welcome to another video from Code Church with Profanis. In this video, we will see how to use the signals RxJS in the Arup library by converting an RxJS source to a signal, and more specifically, we will see how to create a type ahead based on material. And the idea here is how can I provide a user input to an RxJS source? How can I have a loading indicator? And last but not least, how to have also the bounce time. So without any further delay, let's get started. This is the component that we are going to update and work with. What we can see here is that we have an input and then we have a spinner and by default this is false. And then we have the autocomplete which we have option 1, option 2 and option 3. And like we said in the beginning of the video, the goal is to make this dynamic and use an API, an HTTP API. So let's go to the source code to see what we have. Here I have the post service where if I go here, what we can see is that we have a get method which accepts an argument. If the user ID is 100, this is just an artificial throw error. And the only reason that we have it here is to see how to have an error handling into the signals. And then here we have the get where we're using this API and we are providing the user ID if this one has been provided. And also we have an artificial delay of two seconds and yeah, here we have this one to make use of the loading indicator. So let's now go here into the post component and the very first step is to convert the get method of the post service, which returns an observable and create that to a signal. So let's do the following. Post equals, and I'm going to use the to signal and here I will type this post service and then I'm going to use the get method. And we have to import that one. And let's do that manually. So I'm going to have here my import to signal from... I know that this is in Angular slash core slash rxjs interop. So this function get the observable, subscribe to that, get the data and completes the observable right away. So now that we have the post, as we can see here, we have a signal and this is a post array. We can go into the post component HTML and replace this one. So I'm going to have here an ng4 equal let post of posts. And as you can see here, we have a, an error. The reason of that is that since we're working with signals, we have to get the data and to get the data, we have to have the parentheses here to invoke that. And now we can interpolate the post title, post.title. And let's delete that. Nice. So this is the very first step. Let's now go to the browser to see what we have. If I click, now we can see that we have all the data from the API. And this is the actual call that we have just did. And how about now if a user enters here an ID, let's say one, two, three, or whatever, we have to use this ID as well. To do that, we need to have a variable. So let's start with the very basics and progressively we will see how to improve that. I know that I need to have a user ID and this is going to be, you know what? I will have it like, like this, user ID equals to zero. And now let's go into the input and have a banana in a box. Now we know that whenever we are typing something into this input, we expect the user ID into the interpolation to work, like, like this one. And the question now is, how can I use now this user ID here? Because this is all I have to do, right? I want to provide here the user ID so that I can filter out the post by user ID. If I do this and I start typing, we can see that we do not have any request, any HTTP request. And of course, this is happening because we didn't re-invoke the get method. So we have to re-invoke the get method. And to do so, I'm going to use signals again. So the user ID is a signal. And the type is either number or undefined. And the default value, the initial value, will be an undefined. Now, of course, we'll have here an error and the error says that, you know what, this is a signal and to get the value, you have to use the getter. And I use a getter by the parentheses. Now, the user ID, it will go here into the post component HTML 
At first we see that we do not have any error, but if we go to the browser we see something weird going here. And of course the reason is that the user ID, again, this is a signal and we have to use the getter. Please note here that the signals currently is in developer preview and the API might change into the next versions. But apart from that, currently there is no way to have a two-way binding in the input using signals. So we have to do that manually. We have to separate the property binding and the event binding. So this is my property binding. And for the event binding, I'm going to use the ng model change event. And I will say that, you know what? Whenever I have an event, I want the user ID to set the dollar event. And now if I invoke that, I expect whenever I have any change to the user ID to have this value here into the interpolation. And whenever I'm typing, we can see that we have this value here. Nice. But again, we do not see any request to the server. And we'll have the exact same reason. We didn't re-invoke this, this post. So here I'm going to create a constructor. And I want to run a function or, you know what, I want to run this post service get whenever I have a change to the user ID. I'm going to have this by using the effect. And into the effect, I will use an anonymous function. And I want just to have here a search method. This search will create this guy. And the argument of this search will be the user ID. And of course, we need to have here the getter. So let's create this function. And this argument is going to be my user ID. And of course, here we're going to have just like a console log. And I'm going to have my user ID. No more than that. So what is happening here is that whenever we are using the user ID, the getter, automatically, we are registering a listener via the effect, which means that whenever we have any change to the user ID, this search method will run. So let's go here and we will see the following. Whenever we're typing something, we we'll have here the value. This means now that we can improve this logic, improve the search logic. So let me grab this one and paste it here. And now I have this post service get, and instead of using the, this user ID, I'm going to use the provided user ID, which is this guy. And I know that this is an observable. We need to get the data, and we'll have various options here, but what I'm going to do is to convert this one, the observable, to a promise by using the first value from RxJS operator. So this is my first value from. And since this is a promise, I have to use an await here. And of course, the await requires also to have an async. And I know that this is my post data. Nice. So I have my post data here. And now I have to grab this data and set them to the posts. So let's do that. This dot posts. And to set some data to a signal, we'll have to use the set method. What we can see here is that the property set does not exist on type signal. So whenever we're using the to signal, we're creating a signal type, but this signal type is not a writable one. So we have to convert that to a writable. And you know what? I no longer need to use the to signal here. All I need here is to have just a signal. And I know that the type is going to be a post array or an undefined. Or you know what? Just a post array here. And the default value will be an empty array. If we hover over to the post, what we can see is that now we have the writable signal, which means that now we can grab the post data and pass it here. We expect now, whenever we have any change to the user ID, to run the search method and the search method will do these magic things here. So let's go to the browser to see what we have. And if I type the user ID 1, we expect to have a request with the user ID 1, and so on and so forth. But as you can see here, the problem is that we do not have a debound style. We need somehow to delay and not invoke that many HTTP requests. So how can we do that? I know that I have to apply the debound style into an RxJS stream, but this time we do not have here a stream. 
An idea could be to replace this user ID, which is a signal, to replace that with a behavior subject. And whenever we have a change, to set this value there. But you know what? I don't want to use an async operator here. And the reason is that I want to take advantage of the signals because the signals will offer us a local change detection, which is an improved change detection mechanism provided by the Angular team. This is not yet there, but like I said previously, this is a developer preview and more changes will come very soon. So what I'm going to do is the following. Since I now have the user ID here, which is again a signal, I will go here and I will create a user ID dollar equals new behavior subject. And let's say that the type is going to be number or undefined. And by default, this will have undefined. And instead of invoking immediately the search method, let's delete that. I want to send the user ID, the signal user ID, to the behavior subject, like that. So this is my user ID from the signal. So what we are doing is that here we have a stream, which is the user ID behavior subject, and we are sending various data. Various data meaning that this might be the user typing 1, user typing 2, user typing 3, and so on and so forth. And here we can apply a debounce time of, let's say, 500 milliseconds. So since we now have the user ID, we can go here into the constructor, and we can be like, from the user ID, I'm going to have a pipe. I'm going to use a debounce time of 500 milliseconds, and I'm going to subscribe. Into the subscription, I want now to have this search. So I can be like, I want to search and I have to provide the user ID. And the user ID is from this guy. This is my user ID and I will provide it here. Nice. And since we are in Angular 16, we can also take advantage of the new way of unsubscribing the streams. And this is the take until destroyed. Let's see if this can find that. So the take until destroyed, I can go up and I have to import this manually. And I will import this from take until destroyed from, I know that this guy is from Angular, slash core, slash RxJS in the rope. Nice. So this subscription will be destroyed whenever this component got destroyed as well. And now we expect to have the search method run whenever we have a user ID after 500 milliseconds. So let's go to the browser to see what we have. And if I type one, here we have the user ID one. And if I start typing very fast something, we can see now that we have only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight which seems that our debounce time work as expected. And how about now, let's say that I have this guy here and I'm going to type 100, where we are throwing an error and we need now to apply an error handling here. How can we do that? Since we are converting this observable to a promise, we can use a try catch block. So here I'm going to have my try and I'm going to catch for any error. And I'm going to move this guy here. And whenever I have an error, you know what? I'm going just to clear the posts. Like that. And just to make sure that everything works as expected, I'm going to have here a console error by providing the error. So let's go again to the browser to see what we have. And again, if I have this guy and then I type 100, I expect to have an empty array, and if I go to the console, we can see user not found, which is the error from this service. Nice. So far, we have managed to make very good progress. And how about now the loading indicator? If you remember here, we have this guy. You know what? Let me delete this. We have this guy, which is a spinner, and we have to control that. And this would be either true or false whenever we are loading something or not. So I will go to the post component again, and to make this work as expected, I'm going to again to use a signal. And this is going to be a signal of Boolean type, and the initial value will be false. 
and now that is loading, what I can do is go here and be like, is loading set? I want to set the value true. And in the finally block, here I'm going to be like, is loading false. And since now I have this logic here, I can go to HTML and use the is loading, of course with a parenthesis, into the condition. And if we go to the browser and start typing, we expect here to have the loading indicator. And if you remember, we have the artificial delay of two seconds. And now if I have two, three, four, we expect to have this kind of loading indicator. So that was it. Thanks for watching. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and do not forget to subscribe and click the ring bell. See you in the next video.